The importance of this is not only just that it saved uh, extensive work from you know, having to be redone, but also that work had to be vetted by the Bodleian. So because that work had already gone through that, that vetting process, we were able to save a great deal of time and energy uh, through this process. So I use these two examples because I want to point out, uh, I, want to both, I want to make this a, a question, what falls out? And I think about it in two ways. First is, I think, a very literal sense, especially when I talk to digital archivists who are working with, uh, with legacy collections. And, and I think that, that that example from Michael, uh, and the gender chronology example, is very apropos uh, of just kind of going through a, a paper archive and then finding, oh, there's also these digital media that just kind of fall out. But in addition to that, I think it also serves as something of a warning uh, and a cautionary tale as we think forward into the future. The thing about both of these works was that the object of the work, in the case of Neil and, and in case of the uh, Denver chronology example, was an analog pro product, right? The digital was ancillary. It was a tool to get to, to the analog. What we're finding now, with the benefit of 2020 hindsight, is that that digital work itself has, has value in both cases, right? There's, there's value in holding on to that digital work. So the question I kind of want to keep at the fore of your minds is, what, are, what is falling out in our thinking today as we do our digital work, as we do the work that uh, the digital humanities work or all the other kind of work that we do that ends up having a digital footprint? And I think this is important, especially as I'm going to start talking about Big Curator now, as we, one of the fundamental ideas of Big Curator is that we bring what are called 